for the conversion. <laughs> Biscuit. He Who taught to, you that? He wants to be on camera too. <laughs> what is it? What? You missed the kids, don't you? You missed them. I know you missed them. Hey, you guys remember the Cyberquad build? Yeah, that was fun. Well, I finished my i8 and my RS7s in for the color change. And after finishing two high-end German cars, there's one thing I don't have left. It's money. It's time for Uncle Rich to go back to the basics. The Cyberquad cost you a lot of money. The i8 cost you a lot of money. And so did the RS7. Now, the money spent on these cars was in a real grotesque. And I don't use that word often because I don't know what it means. But the cars themselves weren't very expensive because they were run at salvage auction. But it's the little things that end up killing you price-wise. I didn't need to wrap the i8 or the RS7. I also didn't need the i8's fancy steering wheel or the flex key. But one thing I realized after working on these cars is not everyone has the money and not everyone wants to drive a gas-powered car. Some people prefer electric, so I want to build an inexpensive, fun EV myself. Something low-key I can just kick around and go to the store in complete silence and surprise a few people at stoplights. Now the RS7 I would take, but it's pretty loud and when you start it, it's a huge production. And in the i8, I'm commonly mistaken for Jamie Foxx. Now people may ask me, you know what Rich, why not just drive your electric Chevy Spark that you built with the built-in pizza oven? Well, I would, but I'm not a pizza delivery guy, so I'm not going to do that. And the Tesla, well, I gave the Tesla to my daughter. I love gas-powered cars and I will for the foreseeable future. My daughter, on the other hand, has an opportunity to drive an electric car as her first car. And because it's her first car's electric, the likelihood of her driving an electric car for the rest of her life is much higher when you start out with one. So I'm pushing the next generation of EV owners, even though I still love to get my hands dirty in good old-fashioned gasoline. You're welcome. It's like liking thick girls and skinny girls. You can like both. Don't be ashamed to tell your friends because a lot of my EV friends are closet gas guys too. So the pivoting point was when I went to Florida for the Etchified Garage Grand Opening. I visited a small EV conversion company called Green Shed Conversions. Steve, who's converted hundreds of cars already, has been doing it for decades, literally in a green shed. I've never seen so many conversions in my life. He showed off his solar grid setup, where the solar panels charge all the cars during the day, and at night, the cars back feed the power into the house. There's the Hulk, the Nissan Leaf powered truck, an electric pickup truck, two electric Civics, two electric Porsches, an electric Corvette, an electric Ford van, and another electric Porsche, and a million other things. If you want to see the full video of this visit, I'll be posting those on my Patreon soon to become a member if you're interested. Now, after seeing this DIY passion, I thought to myself, yeah, let me build another EV. This is just too cool. Now, the challenge is, which one do I build? I have an old school Mini Cooper that people are begging me to convert, but it's just too cool for that. Believe it or not, I think there's just some cars that shouldn't be converted. Leave the icon alone. I actually enjoy the quirkiness of a carbureted engine. Sometimes. Now for the next conversion, I wanted the theme to take a car that's not known for its reliability and make it reasonably reliable. So the very first vehicle on my mind was a Range Rover. And if you watch my best friend Sam's videos, you know they aren't known for being reliable at all. But you know what? I really don't want a Range Rover. It's not my style. I wanted to start off with something a little bit smaller, cheaper, and something easy to find parts for. So after asking around a few forums for the least reliable car, I found my answer. The new Mini Cooper. Now I know already there's at least one Mini Cooper owner in the comment section shouting, in my 10 years I've never had a single issue, only routine maintenance and oil changes, so good for you, but the rest of the known universe disagrees. So I went online and if there's one thing about the new Mini Coopers, there's plenty of them. People just want to get rid of them for some reason. I mean hundreds. As a matter of fact, I went on IAAI.com and you can literally buy a running and driving one for $1,000. If you keep scrolling, you can get them to be even less. Now, after some digging, I scored this one for $1,500 with a reportedly blown engine. Is it really blown? I guess you'll find out in a couple minutes. But I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter because it's getting swapped anyways. So keep in mind, I'm cheap, and the clock has officially started on the money I spent on this car. We're at $1,500 so far. Now, if I can sell the blown motor as a core for someone to build that, that'd be great too. The goal is to get the cost as low as humanly possible. So I'm going to be using parts from scrapyards, Home Depot, consignment sales, savage yards, and my basement. Now, I can support my bad habits by selling parts that I don't need, which has been more often than not. Now, the sperm bank won't call me back. And a pro tip, don't be like me and set up 50 eBay auctions in a row. Then get overwhelmed and just go to get Popeyes instead of shipping the products. Use ShipStation. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In just a few clicks, you're managing orders like a G, printing out discounted shipping labels like a G, and getting your products out fast. 
like a G. ShipStations works on all the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even International. You compare and choose the best shipping solution every time. They even offer big discounts on shipping costs, and you can access the same postage discounts that they usually reserve for large Fortune 500 companies like Tesla would be if they were recognized by the S&P. And right now, my peeps can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use offer code RICHREBUILDS for selling whatever it is you're trying to sell. Use it now or after you watch this entire episode. Make ship happen. ShipStation, thank you for sponsoring this episode. And let's check this Mini Cooper out. Oh, oh that was good. Okay, you're gonna need some okay, more. I'm good. Hi, dumbass. <laughs> I, I want to show off my backing up skills a little yeah, bit. I love, right? what I, love the, I love the new. Uh, yeah, listen, good. like I didn't. I thought you sold your trailer, Tom. Indeed. You guys yeah. know any good welders that could weld a D ring on? You guys know anyone? Not at all. No. Okay. Well, what you have, Brian? Those things are toast. Yeah. Want to try to start it? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what's it gonna hurt? Go for well, it. What's it? What's it gonna do, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm curious. I, I, you know, it, depending on how bad he overheated it, if it's a minor overheat, it probably will start and it ain't gonna run very well. If it's a major overheat, it probably just starts spitting cool. Let's find out. <laughs> Come on, I'll pop the hood and see what the hood is doing. Where's yeah. the hood release? Oh, well, for everybody wondering, this is the brand of boxers that Rich wears. <laughs> <laughs> that is YouTube gold right there. What the? <laughs> Matt, what the fuck is it? I don't see anything under here. Really? He's releasing the gas cap, yeah. the sunroof. Jesus. It's in the glove compartment. Oh, really? Actually, some things are in the glove That's not that. What the? No? No. <laughs> That's a... Wait, now it's not it. Do I need to look this up? Oh, oh, there it is. It's on that side. Wow. That makes sense. So where's the, uh, the secondary release? Uh, it's a beam gun, you gotta reach your finger in there, we gotta feel around and... I think I found it. Yeah. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Somebody. Don't be scared. Okay, ready? Okay, this is fun. Let's get to it. Everybody always overlooks the AC, discharging the AC, because when you're in a hurry to take something apart, you're taking it apart, you get the condenser in your hands, and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta take this line off. It's still full of refrigerant. It's still, the best thing to do is empty your refrigerant before you do anything. That way you can just go. What's that paint code say? Electric blue. How convenient. So appropriate. It's like it was meant to be. Just pull it, start pulling it apart. Just whip it off. Oh. These little clips in between. Just help by your little wolf it's not even supposed to be there that one apparently. Yeah, I think they um they they jerried it for sure. Remember, this is a prior salvage vehicle which I found out the hard way. <laughs> oh, I shit. got there and they were like, oh, um, I got the title and it said sal uh, reconstructed. Oh, reconstructed. So at one point it was it was anyway. erect. I gotta look it up. Yeah, oh, it's, it's burnt out too. Yay! I got you Yay! Thank you. Hmm. All right, halfway there. <laughs> Oh, it's just a big woman thing. No, if it was a sand job, it wouldn't have the bolts on it. It wouldn't, ah, have, it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have the crash bar at all. Yeah, the crash bar wouldn't even be there. No. Just panel, panel, bond, just lost. panel bond the bumper to it. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like underneath. Oh, Sweet. That was, that's probably that is weird. from the salvage. Yeah, that's been. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, guess what? That's, that's it's, all, it's all coming off, baby. It's all electric flex. So like, Look at this. Kind of like, this is, wow. this is like chicken wire. Yeah, the baler wire, just holding it in place. Wow. Very nice. Hey. This heat shield's just hey. hanging out on is the this, pipe. Is this the handiwork of some chicken farmer that had extra wire? <laughs> that is chicken coop wire. Oh, man. Look at that, huh? That's awful. Oh, that's not good. Thank God it's all coming off. So I was right. Yeah. This is an earlier one. So this well, what's, fan, that, what's that fan for? It's cools not spinning. The, cools the electric power steering motor. Right. Uh, that's being turned by, it's an electric motor turning a hydraulic pump. But that fan doesn't even spin. Yeah, it's it's wedged. I mean, it's like somebody jacked it up here or hit something. But right. this is what cools it because they had a heating problem. Right. So they didn't run them all the time. They only ran it when they turned the steering. So. Wow. Yeah. Well. I don't know that, but this motor looks like it's kicked back. It doesn't look straight. Yeah. Nope. 
Yes, yeah, so it's probably a front impact. I want to check the VIN. Yeah. I, I got to check the VIN. Now. Get the car fax, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I know this could set. Whoa! Thanks, motor. That motor's done. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's like chocolate syrup. You can see the coolant on the outside there. This looks like biscuits runs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it smells like exhaust. Uh, yeah. That's definitely a head gasket failure. Yes. Can you, can you find the VIN and read it to me? Is it somewhere on the bed or somewhere? Yep. This is loose, ready to go. I'll get these, take these two, and then we'll cut off this chicken wire. I can't believe they use chicken wire. Oh, I can. Broke right off. She's on there. And it's got enough flex. Good. Wow, that got smoky. Nice. Up, no, up and down. Yep. Oh. You all right? Oh yeah, a little cool. That was awesome. So what we've got here is something missing. Uh, there's nothing in there, the honeycomb's missing. So somebody either hauled this out which is a big no-no, or it exploded <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> Either way, it's missing. It's performance mod. What yeah, for sure. It's high flow now. There is no catalytic. Oh, it, blew, it blew through it. Somebody, somebody took it out. One the they other. gutted the cat? Yeah. Oh, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no entrails in there. Well, maybe they, maybe they got it for performance. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Why? that's probably why. Okay. Chad has a way of making you feel very small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and very stupid. Mm -hmm. I said, 13 years of working with BMWs, it's learned techniques and... See, I tried the labeling technique and it didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good biscuit grippers. Biscuit grippers. I wonder, are all model year minis, is the battery located in the rear? Uh, yeah, I think they all are. Because BMW, mm -hmm. they're all in the back. Okay. Do you need the mallet too? Oh, that's in there. Go ahead. Again, we don't know what happened to this car. The vapor lines come this way. There's only a connector from the sending unit. There you go. There's an there's a evap. Okay. Okay. Take those off. Yep. You know what I want now? Do you have any gloves? Yep. That looks the, like the dirtiest thing ever. Yeah. It's like a dirty shower curtain. <laughs> Look at this giant behemoth being removed, man. Giant? Well, yeah, that's what, yeah. Well, <laughs> the giant compared to my I ate three cylinder. Oh, yeah. It does have an extra cylinder. You know what? This is a performance boost for you, Rich. What? You take the mini supercharged motor. Yeah. And you dump <laughs> it in your I8. Now you just put a big block in there. Look at that. Swing it. Yeah, that's like, that's pretty loose. I think it's going to pop once you get it down. Yep, it's coming out. It's coming out. Or hung on that. Oh, wait, no, now it's out. It's officially degassed. Oh, there's the emissions tube. Is it really? Did I just it? Surprise. 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 I knew it was under the thing. See? What's got that? Another, got another one here. There's a chicken bone here. <laughs> Did you smell that? <laughs> what? The, the chicken bone. Uh, it could be a it could be a human finger. Could be. Oh, that's cool. dead weight. So, uh, oh look, yeah. So this we, was we, this. We could, we could take care of this, no problem. See this over here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this tank care. was dropped before. Look at that, like white non. That's not an OEM zip tie. No. Someone went under here before. Someone's been here. The OEM one's right below it. The black one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> that's too much. I'm curious what they did. <laughs> if you had the Harbor wow. Freight I mean, it, you know, magnetic one, you'd be upset. Those things are great, man. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, they are. They're really they're good. They're great, man. Just getting the ship linkages out of the way. Yeah. Now they're not in the way. I like people who need me. <laughs> yeah. The real people.
One drive line. One massive hole. There's still an exhaust gap and a hole in there. Yeah. We can we can pry that out of there. Oh look cool, it come out of the exhaust. Jesus. It's liquid cooled. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh, oh look at the puff on that. That thing really blew up. Yeah, it was all in the cap. Well, well, the, the, the cat that was the cat, the cat that never was the catless cat. Yeah. Good stuff. Hopefully, it'll be gone by the time I come home. Look at all that. That's yummy. All right, so we're done everything now. Uh, thank you to uh, to Stephen, Chad, Brian, and Biscuit. Biscuit, you're right, buddy. You didn't do anything. You didn't do a damn thing. Everything's out. Engines out. Axles are out. Um, uh, we're gonna finish up putting the rest of the stuff in the truck. And then we're gonna figure out what to do next. They did all the heavy lifting today, and uh, I have to do all the heavy lifting, getting it off the truck, and also uh, starting the conversion process. But for some of that, when it comes time to drop the actual motor and transmission back into the car, I'll likely come back to the garage, because uh, having this lift was invaluable. That's the reason why I did it here, because this lift made light work out of this. Absolutely. Most of us were working on it. Uh, Chad knows the gas tank is out. Uh, I'm not throwing that gas tank away. There's good ass gas in there. I'm not, gonna, I'm not throwing that gas away, you crazy? I've been here too many times. Oh no. Cool it. What's that? Oh no, my deck. Oh no. It's been christened. No, no, no nothing gets that out. <laughs> 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 All right, boys and girls, this little beast is finally home. Now, the reason why I brought it to the electrified garage is because I didn't have enough room in my personal garage to do it. If you look here, there's not really a whole heck of a lot of room do the kind of work we did to it. So I brought it to the garage, shout out to Chad, Brian, uh, Steven, and Pete, and even Biscuit, who did nothing but bark the entire time. But this mini engine is up for grabs, it is blown. Uh, there are some serious issues going on with it. Uh, if you want this to rebuild, to, to work into some crazy mini project of your own, you let me know, it does have a modified supercharger pulley on it. I'm assuming the supercharger is good, but I don't wanna assume anything, but this is gonna be uh, sold as is. You let me know, shoot me an offer. My email address is in the link in the description box below. So what I'll be doing is I'll be separating the transmission from the engine. This is the transmission uh, on the right-hand side and the left-hand side is the engine. I'm going to keep this front wheel drive because quite frankly, the work is already done for me. Uh, the mounts are already in place. All I have to do is just remove the engine and in place of the engine, I'm gonna put in an electric motor. And it's just very interesting to see just how simple swapping from a gas engine to an electric motor is because instead of this, you know, mess of wires and oil and coolant, I'm literally gonna have something that looks like that mounted onto the transmission itself, just like the rat rod. A lot of people are asking, you know, well, why are you putting a transmission in? And because again, all the work is already done for you. The transmission mounts are already in place. All I have to do is just bolt that back in, uh, put a, uh, the electric motor on the side of it, and everything's kind of already in balance, so I'm gonna keep it front wheel drive. Oh man, sorry about this mess in here, guys. I didn't mean to have uh, so much stuff around, but I'll get this uh, cleaned up eventually. So, uh, what I wanna talk about is that after pulling the engine in this, in, in the Mini Cooper, one of the good things I've realized is the, the power steering rack. And this is a really good thing because in most cars, you have a, a steering rack and that's operated by a pump and a pulley on the engine. Uh, on this car, I don't have to do that. This is actually uh, an electric hydraulic assisted pump. So there's a positive and negative terminal on that pump that drives the pump. And then in turn, that pump pumps the power steering fluid into the rack to give you that electric assist. So I don't have to think of like crazy concoction uh, to do that when I, when I have an electric motor in here. All it really needs is 12 volt and that's gonna give me the, the power assist. This is a big problem amongst a lot of EV conversions. A lot of the times they just keep the manual steering and you could easily see the difference between manual and power steering when you have your car off and you try to turn the wheel versus starting the engine and trying to turn it. I know the car is very light. I'm kind of thinking I could probably get away with uh, installing a little bit of power assist so to make it a lot easier and a lot smoother uh, for me to drive because I mean, quite frankly, all this stuff is already there. So why the heck not? Now, in terms of the transmission, I'm just gonna be splitting, like I said before, the engine from the transmission. It's a lot easier because uh, I have all the mounting and the bolt points in place uh, on both the left and the right side of the vehicle. 
So after I split that, I'm gonna be putting the electric motor on that side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because A, ease of use, and B, I don't really think there's a need to convert this to rear wheel drive. That just adds too much cost and complexity. I'm completely okay with keeping the front wheel drive. Not only that, but the transmission will still be a manual. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep the clutch or not yet, but um, there's been a lot of talking points about, hey, is it even worth to keep the manual transmission? And if it already has a manual transmission, it is absolutely worth it just to keep it because people don't realize that I could still select the gear ratio. I could put it in first, I could put it in second or third, and I could just cruise in third the entire time with more than enough power. But having the options to be able to choose where you are uh, within the gear range is great. Not only that, but when it comes to highway cruising, you know, I could put it in thick and, you know, have a lot less stress on the motor itself. The other thing I want to talk about is the vacuum assisted braking. Now, if you look, that's the brake booster right there. And that's the line that goes all the way down and comes out. And that actually connects to, to the engine vacuum. So now this makes it a lot easier to press down on the brakes because if you just relied on using that manual braking power to stop the car, it's very stiff. And a lot of the times what the engine does, it provides that assisted vacuum. So when you step on the brakes, it makes it a lot easier to push that hydraulic fluid to each corner of the vehicle. So that's another thing I have to figure out. That's very important. On a lot of smaller conversions, uh, the brakes are kept manual, like a manual closed system with no vacuum assist. And those are a lot smaller cars, a lot easier to stop. Even though this one is smaller, it's still not really a very small car. It, it does have some weight to it. So I still will need that assist. So I have to think of a, some kind of 12 volt system uh, to integrate there to provide the, uh, the assist that I need uh, to help stop the car. I'm likely gonna go with a DC motor setup, but I haven't really decided on that yet. Uh, DC motors are a lot easier to use. You could find them literally anywhere. You could find them in, in forklifts, you go to the junkyards and find them for dirt cheap. But again, this is gonna be a budget build. And speaking of budget builds, uh, one of my biggest regrets in my, uh, in my overall YouTube career was the episode I made where I actually gave away a lot of my Tesla stuff. And that episode was really difficult to make because I started giving away a lot of stuff hand over fist, not realizing that people really had no idea what to do with the parts. And a lot of people never really had conversions in the first place. Their main goal was to sell the things and make money off of them. So when I gave them away in a lot of cases, I actually saw them pop up on eBay and a lot of other local um, EV conversion websites because they want to make a quick buck. A lot of people don't really understand what it takes to make an actual electric vehicle conversion. So when they saw stuff for free, they're like, oh, this is really neat. I could really use this. And they bought it, sat on it, and then just ended up selling it. So what I started doing was I started going back, I started writing people to say, hey, before I give you this stuff, I want you, I want to know just how far along you are in your EV conversion process. And a lot of people were like, well, you know, I have an idea. I have a couple of pieces of uh, ideas sketched on a pad of paper. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm looking for someone that has things a little bit further along uh, so I can focus on them uh, as opposed to a person that's just starting out and that caused a whole lot of drama. But either way, I'm gonna be starting from scratch here. Uh, a lot of the parts I'll be ordering from eBay, from local places, uh, you know, from, you know, Endless Spear, from, you know, DIY electric vehicles on Facebook groups and things like that. So I'll be starting over. Again, the goal is to make this as cheap as humanly possible. I regret giving all that stuff away because a lot of people didn't put it to good use uh, and they ended up selling most of it. So I'm not gonna be doing that again. But either way, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this is gonna be probably on the longer side of the series. I also work on gas stuff too, and I know that bugs a lot of people, but it's really simple to do. You just subscribe to the channel, and when you see a video pop up that you don't wanna see, just simply don't watch it and wait for an electric vehicle conversion video to pop back up. So next week, I, I would likely be working on this. It might be a video on the RS7. I'm not really sure about it yet. Don't get your pennies in the bunch. It's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. Check me out on Instagram for updates on the uh, new truck I just bought. I just bought a nice big truck uh, to pull my EV projects around. But uh, I will uh, talk to you guys soon.